now we should go further and I draw on a thoracic spine. It is relatively thin part and longer than the other parts. The part has around 12 segments and after that comes one thicker lumbar part. The lumbar part consists of 5 segments. Up there we had 12 on a thoracic spine. After that comes the sacral part and the coccygeal part. The region over here is the place where spinal cord ends and it's called the medullary cone. Then comes the terminal thread. It is approximately 20 centimeters long and it just gives the longitudinal support to the spinal cord. It is made out of fibrosis tissue. Now let's look at the spinal cord in general. We said the decusation of the pyramids is the place where spinal cord begins. Then we had the cervical part with 8 segments. Then we had the thoracic spine with 12 segments and the lumbar spine with 5 segments, the sacral and the coccygeal part. The sacral spine also had 5 segments. And then we had the terminal thread over here which gives the support to the spinal cord. It is just a fibrosis tissue. Now you probably noticed two enlargements here and here. Those enlargements are explained because here at these places a lot of spinal nerves leaves for the extremities, for the limbs. Over here at the cervical part they leave for the upper extremities, for the upper limbs and down there at the lumbar part they leave for the lower extremities, the lower limbs. Now I will illustrate the vertebral column and the spinal cord inside of it. As you can see the spinal cord is shorter than the vertebral column and because of that we have the last lumbar spinal nerve leaving here, leaving the spinal cord and leaving the vertebral column here. Same over here and over here. And I already explained you how we name these segments. You can just think about it from this uh, side view, it's easier to understand it. Now you should also know that the medullary cone, the place where spinal cord ends, should reach the second lumbar vertebra. It is not illustrated that way here, but you should just know that. Now I drew some cross sections of the spinal cord. First we had the cervical segment. Behind here you can see the median sulcus. Right next to him is the posterior intermediate sulcus and more lateral is the posterior lateral sulcus. So let me write it all down. This was the median sulcus. Then we had the posterior intermediate sulcus and this over here was the posterior lateral sulcus. The posterior lateral sulcus, this sulcus over here, is very important because I said that the posterior roots for the spinal nerves leave here. So they come from here and they join the anterior roots and they create the spinal nerve. From the anterior point of view you can see here the median fissure and over here you should be able to notice the anterolateral sulcus. On the back there is an intermediate septum over here. So this is the median fissure. Over here should be anterolateral sulcus. This is the intermediate septum. Now I drew further the gray matter. The gray matter is the place where neurons, the bodies of the neurons are. And the white matter over here is a place where are the axons of the neurons, the tracts. They have the myelin sheet. They are, that's why they have this white color. I explained that in the lesson about the nerve. You can go back and watch that video if you don't understand this. And here should be central canal. This over here is the central canal. Now try to remember in the embryology videos I am drawing the neural tube. 
and if this is a neural tube, okay, we had the neural tube. There was a central channel over here, and those were the cells around it. The central channel stayed really small, and all these cells around it have grown. So that's why we have a central channel here really small, and the rest of the spinal cord really big. Now I explained you recently about the crossing fibers in the vaccination of pyramids, but along the whole length of the spinal cord, there are nerve fibers that cross sides, and we call these the commissures. So over here, you can see the gray commissure and the white commissure. This is the place where the sides exchange fibers. This part over here of the spinal cord is the posterior horn of the gray matter. It is the sensible horn. It is called the sensible horn because the posterior sensible roots of the spinal nerve come to the spinal cord through this horn. This part over here is the motor horn or the anterior horn of the spinal cord gray matter. The motor neurons send their axons through the anterolateral sulcus here and they join with the sensible root of the spinal nerve and they create the spinal nerve. I already said that. So we had the anterior horn, we had the posterior horn. Okay. Now in the white matter we can distinguish the lateral funiculus, the posterior funiculus, and the anterior funiculus. So this is the anterior funiculus, this is the lateral funiculus, and this over here is the posterior funiculus. Okay. Now the thoracic segments look more like this. They are smaller. The great matter will also have one more horn and it's the lateral horn. It's going to look like this. So this over here is the difference. The lateral horn. This lateral horn can be found in all segments all the way till the first two lumbar segments over here. And then further, it cannot be found anymore. You cannot see the lateral horn. So L2 is the place where the lateral horn ends. Now the lumbar part is going to look different. It's going to be bigger and have different gray matter shape. And of course, then comes the sacral part. It's going to be smaller and also a different gray matter shape. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please check out my website, flashbrainanatomy.com.